Welcome back to another episode of The Shack Show. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to talk about spooks. And also welcome back after like me not posting in a while. The reason for that is I just took a little break around the holidays. But we're going to jump back into it and I'll be posting a lot of, of very consistent content coming up. So to start us off today, I really wanted to talk about spooks in general. And uh, spooks are one of my top favorite plugs ever. Uh, I've caught some of my biggest topwater bass ever on them, uh, and really biggest bass on plugs, I believe. I don't, I don't think there's another plug that I've caught as many and as big a fish on, like the spook. The spook, for some reason, uh, is just one of the greatest topwater plugs for striped bass. And the reason for that being, they have a very unique action to them, where they walk side to side like this, and they mimic a lot of different baits especially one of the baits that is the striped bass's biggest uh, like prey item, and that being the adult bunker or Atlantic Manhattan as uh, its proper name is, but we call it bunker, pogies, whatever, the same, they're all the same thing. Spooks really do very well in getting those big bass to feed. Uh, and I wanted to go into a little bit about you know how I use spooks uh, in the different scenarios that I've used spooks and been very successful. Uh, and then kind of some of the nuances to them that uh, I don't think a lot of people know and uh, I fish them very similar to a lot of people but I also fish them a little bit different in some instances so I wanted to cover all of that today. So for the longest time I thought spooks were pretty, they didn't have a lot of different action to them. Uh, you know you really want them to be working side to side back and forth getting that action of like an injured bait fish up on the surface and that is uh, implemented by having your rod tip generally at a lower angle and you're just doing sweeps with the, the tip of your rod and what's going to happen is that spook will walk back and forth like this. Over a long period of time of trial and error and different things I've really discovered that that is one of the best ways to work a spook hands down. But equally you can utilize these spooks and make them do different actions that are as productive when the bass are being weird or a little bit more finicky than normal. So for example, uh, I was fishing one day and I had seaweed that got caught on my spook and I decided to reel it really quickly in because you know it was a wasted cast. When I started ripping it across the surface, this giant spook, one that was the same size as this, this is the exact same model of spook, was skipping across the surface of the water and it gave off some sort of a uh, new action that I'd never seen a plug do before, but to me it didn't look like something a bass would eat. So this thing's flying across the surface of the water, there's a little like bubble trail behind it from the hook, and otherwise it's just kind of skipping across the surface of the water. Well, all morning I had bass that were pretty sizable fish following the spook in, but they just weren't committing to eating it. I sped it up and I was ripping it across the surface of the water, and I had a 50 inch bass come out of the water, eat the plug, and take it down and keep going. And uh, I managed to land that fish. That was one of the biggest fish I've ever caught on top water. Biggest uh, bass I've ever caught on a plug. And it was just an extraordinary fight from that fish. Anyway, that taught me a lot in that, like, and it's funny because that's how like you learn fishing, just like being out on the water and doing different things with your plugs is gonna eventually, you know, teach you different ways to target fish when they're being more finicky and makes you more and more productive. So that was something that I learned that was like, you know, all striped bass plugs have an action when the builder is building them that the builder wants that plug to do. But not all the time, you know, you need to actually fish the plug in that manner. A lot of the time you can actually switch up the action and try new things if depending on how those fish are, you know, how aggressive they're feeding or what they're doing. And that is a way that I've now implemented many, many times in the future where if I have bass that are being really finicky and they're not fully committing but they're swirling at the plug, uh, I'll start ripping it and I'll speed it up really fast. I'll let it skip across the surface of the water and then I'll stop it. And a lot of the time on that stop, on that pause, before I start ripping it across the surface again, a bass will come up and crush it. So that was a very unique way that I learned how to like further give the spook a little bit more dimensions to its fishing. Not only do you have that very subtle lackadaisical back and forth action that the spooks are known for and uh, produce so well but from that action, 
they also ripped really fast across the surface of the water, look like a fleeing bait fish, and they'll get that reaction strike from those fish, and even really, really big fish, because 50 inch bass is pretty much as big as it gets. I mean, that's a really, really big fish. And so that being said, like you're gonna still get those cow sized striped bass that everybody wants going after a plug like that. And then the, there's, I mean, other things like that, other little variations where you stop and pop it and get the spook to hop out of the water and stuff will also trigger these more, uh, these, uh, these fish that are a little bit more finicky to actually eat the plug. And then, you know, the other thing spooks are great for, and now let's kind of talk about like when you're trying to target fish that are maybe not fully committing or to other plugs such as pencils or maybe other things like bucktails or something that you'd be fishing during the day. Uh, a spook sometimes will give that unique action that you actually need uh, to get those fish to strike. Uh, one time I was talking to a buddy of mine who's a really good fisherman. He's fishing for a lot of years and he was a guide and everything like that. And he told me spooks do very well when bass have competition. So whether that being a school of bass down there that's trying to all go after the same prey item or like maybe a bluefish and a bass or something like that. When the bass have competition, spooks work tremendously. They'll get those fish to really, really aggressively eat it. Uh, and I've had many scenarios where you do get those pack attack style, like multiple fish going after the plug. Pencils work a lot better when there's a singular fish by itself, but that's a whole other video like in the among itself. But spooks do really well when there's a lot of fish down there, but maybe they're not feeding, maybe they're just digesting. It will get those bass to actually come up and feed. So that's something I always like to keep in mind. It's like if you're getting on a spook bite where there's a lot of fish eating spooks and especially big ones, there's probably a few fish out there. And so spooks are a phenomenal bait when it comes to just, you know, being a big, pre big presence in the water and those bass will be able to sense that it's there and they'll go right after it. Um, but as you can see, they come in many different sizes and many different styles. Um, I'm a huge fan of the Pumbaa plugs. This is the Pumbaa plug Magnum Walker. This is the Pumbaa plug Walker. They're both my like two top favorite wooden plugs ever. Uh, and the reason for this is because they cast really well and they have amazing action. And they're both like perfect size for me. Um, another one that a lot of guys really love using and is a very productive one is this Armsmith Jig Smith. This is one of the smaller ones that make a bigger model as well. It's another fairly awesome, you know, wooden plug that works great. Um, Probably one of my favorite spooks, again, like I would say plastic spooks, my favorite plastic spook of all time is the Rebel Jumping Minnow. The Rebel Jumping Minnow it can catch huge bass. I've caught bass up to 45 inches on this. Uh, when they're on peanut bunker or the bass are being extraordinary, extraordinarily finicky, you know, putting a very small profile in there that has ridiculous action and it, it just works unbelievable. And I like to fish those anywhere from sandy beaches, estuaries, rocks, like I'll fish the spooks all over the place, but small spooks like this, when, you know, maybe you're fishing on a beach where there's bass, you know, the water's crystal clear and the bass are a little bit spooky and they're like trying to uh, not get eaten by like birds or whatever. Spooks, especially the Rebel Jumping Minnow, are one of my favorites of all time to throw in those scenarios. Um, and then the other one is this Yozuri. I think they call it some sort of a pencil, but it really is a spook. Uh, this Yozuri one did work very well this fall for me. Um, I cut a bunch of really nice bass on it. Um, and it just was another, like, a little bit bigger than the Jumping Minnow plastic plug profile that was doing so well. Uh, and those plugs will really, like, those spooks will really handle everything that you could ever want. But I do think that having something like a really large spook to attract those fish that are feeding on really big bait. And then if you have very finicky fish, throwing smaller spooks is some of the best ways you can imagine to get those fish to come up and eat. And then obviously there's nothing that beats top water. Top water is one of my favorites of all time. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you like this video, can you please like and subscribe? It really helps me out and I'll see you next time.